Welcome to episode 10 of Better With Books. I'm your host, Roots. In this episode, I talk about the book The Unbearable Lightness of Being by Milan Kundera. I briefly talk about the book and how beautiful the prose is, and then I go on on a, I guess you could call it a slight rant, where I talk about what's wrong with politics these days and conversations and how we have to go out and pop each other's bubbles if we want to make any sort of headway in today's society. So I hope you enjoy and I hope you learn something. I liked this book a lot, but in a weird way. Not in the way that I like most books. Not because I liked the characters or the plot twists or the setting. I liked the unbearable lightness of being because of how Milan Kundera made arguments. Arguments for little things, like what vertigo actually is, or what it means to have a calling but to deny that calling. Or how it's only things that repeat a lot over and over that end up meaning anything. Little things that don't necessarily make sense. But in this story, in the hands of this writer, they do end up making sense. And that's the magic of this book. If you bring up an idea enough times throughout a story, repeat it, build on it, you end up with a giant, solid mountain. That mountain might be hollow inside. It might even fail under pressure, but it's a mountain. It looks solid and daunting. It looks like you must believe that it exists. And the trick isn't in the part where you claim something to be true. It's in taking that thing and convincing everyone else, no matter what their preconceptions or beliefs, that it is indeed true. And that's what this book excels at, giving depth and believableness to even the oddest or most simplistic of ideas or definitions. I'm not going to go through any of these arguments in any depth because it's incredibly hard to go through the entire book and pull out every point that goes to support one or another argument. But I will give a few examples of the brilliance of the prose itself. Listen to this description of Vertigo. Anyone whose goal is something higher must expect one day to suffer vertigo. And on the next page... Vertigo is the voice of the emptiness below us, which tempts us and lures us. It is the desire to fall, against which, terrified, we defend ourselves. Here's another example, this one of how one of the characters is always afraid that his girlfriend will leave him even though he has no reason to be. He who gives himself up like a prisoner of war must give up his weapons as well. And deprived in advance of defense against a possible blow, he cannot help wondering when the blow will fall. That is why I can say that for Franz, love meant the constant expectation of a blow. Reading this book, being taken aback by the beauty in the lines of reasoning, the prose, made me notice how little of that beauty exists in real life. Let me explain. The problem with people in conversations these days is twofold. One, no one is listening. And two, no one is backing up their claims. And because no one is listening to what they say, they don't seem to care whether what they said has any weight, has anything to back it up with. Because they already believe what they're saying. And since no one is listening to or challenging them, why should it matter if the facts back them up? And then what you're left with, what this world is now full of, is a bunch of people believing their own lies and not being confronted with the data and ideas that refute those lies. When everyone is living in a bubble, who's there to go out and pop those bubbles? When you won't point out the flaws in my thinking and I don't bother listening to your ideas and pointing out your blindness, then we both lose. The danger of it, the danger that now pervades politics, is that neither side knows this. In fact, we both think that we are correct and the other is not, which is logically impossible. If the blind lead the blind... Won't they all fall into the ditch? These days, an argument means a back and forth that never goes anywhere because both sides have stopped listening a long time ago. It shouldn't mean that. It should mean a conversation where neither side sees the world the same way, a dialogue that both sides can gain from. So start listening. Start arguing. Start popping bubbles and letting your bubble be popped. Don't read only one newspaper or watch only one news channel. Don't follow people who agree with you. Follow the people with whom you can have meaningful conversations. The worst that can happen is you lose those true friends who aren't so true. And the best that can happen is you both end up seeing the beauty of each other's well-made arguments. These mountains of logic 
and elegance. Hey guys, thanks for listening and sticking to the end here. Um, If you want to get in touch with me, I'm on Twitter at RootsMac, that's R-O-O-T-Z-M-A-C. And I would appreciate at this point in my podcasting career if you would go on iTunes and leave me a rating there. Um, I appreciate any feedback, all ratings. Thanks in advance.